so the patient goes to the OR, has mm -hmm. their resection. George, what do you want to do? I want to give him chemo. Really? Yeah. What kind of chemo? <laughs> That's the question. Well, if you were at ASCO, and I happen to be there, ASCO, <laughs> there was a presentation from our colleagues from the UK, and it was uh, SPAC4, and it showed that the combination of Cape Cytobine with Jim Cytobine was superior to Jim Cytobine in the post-op setting. So I think that has become the standard in the United States. Uh, it's an interesting trial, so I think it's reasonable to give Cape Cytobine. It was uh, 1660 milligram per meter squared uh, per day, uh, so what is it, 8.30, twice a day. Uh, patients uh, were given uh, CAPE 21 out of 28 days, um, and they did pretty well. 78% of patients were able to tolerate the CAPE, and the GEM was also well tolerated. So um, there's some problems that I have with the trial. 60% uh, were R1, mm -hmm. so that's a, that's a big number. Uh, so we'll have to see, you know, is that real? Uh, we know they don't use a lot of radiation in the UK, or at least we know that the quality, again, may be in question, so uh, that's important. Uh, in the future, though, we'll have a Braxane gem from the APAC trial. That study's been completed. It was accrued in two years, uh, so hopefully we'll have that data very soon. And then we also have the Fulfirinox regimen. The French are doing that. They've taken out the bolus. They've reduced the intermediate TCAM by 20%. Uh, we tried to bring that to the U.S. in the intergroup. Uh, we were not successful, but uh, we'll have to see what that trial does. I think, unfortunately, they are selecting patients in that study, so it's a slow accrual, and so we'll have the same debate. Is it a Braxane gem or Fulfirinox, hopefully, in the adjuvant setting, but at least we'll have moved the field forward in having uh, treatments that are available. But today, I think Cape gem is a very reasonable uh, regimen. Again, I'd be careful with your uh, PPIs, your uh, proton pump inhibitors because there's an interaction that's being reported more and more between Cape Cytobine and those agents. And as you know, most uh, patients that come out of surgery are on PPI. So mm -hmm. just, uh, again, patient management issues. And that's that the PPI makes the Cape Cytobine less effective Potentially, than you would yeah. want it to be. And then talking a little bit, we've touched on locally advanced pancreas cancer. Um, John, does your treatment approach change for locally advanced? We've talked a little bit about the role of radiation, plus minus, but does that change your, your choice of chemotherapy when you're thinking, let's say this is somebody that's not going to go to resection? Yeah, I still probably use the same parameters I would use for a metastatic patient, quite honestly. Age, performance status, um, you know, uh, and, and factor that in. So. Really, the defaults probably Gemnab, Taclitaxel, and then why would I not? And there will be some cases when I might not. Okay, Eileen, about the same thing. Yeah, I I, I think so. For if they're truly locally advanced and unresectable, um, question for me is whether or not to use radiation in that group. But the idea of consolidating this was brought up earlier. The idea of providing an opportunity to stop treatment and watch and monitor. I think that's that's a nice goal and as we all know these patients get tired and six months of these heavy duty cytotoxic regimens is wearing for the yeah. fittest of the fit. So a little uncomfortable with just stopping after chemotherapy on its own because I think the probability is that's not going to be a sustained disease control for too long and you know your group's uh, approach is intriguing, right, of low-intensity treatment on an ongoing basis, trying to push off the inevitable, but maintaining a quality of life at lesser toxicity. I think it's a strategy that maybe we need to explore more in pancreas cancer. You know, in metastatic disease, after we've debulked patients, got their disease under control, maybe this is a setting where we can perhaps, perhaps, for some, ease off the pressure, uh, but maintain some level of treatment. Yeah. I mean, we've seen some interesting data. There's an abstract at this year's GIASCO that's looking at Gemnab Paclitaxel in the locally advanced setting and then doing the approach that all of you sort of suggested along the way, which is you give some chemotherapy and then potentially consolidate with radiation therapy versus continuing on with the chemotherapy. And I think as that, that study and more studies like that come through, you know, we'll get a, more of a sense as to whether or not this, this radiation consolidation helps for these patients. Yeah, the LAPACT study, or 
<laughs> locally <Yeah>. advanced bankers <laughs> cancer <laughs> trial study uh, was evaluating that theme and we had one unfortunate uh, failure in the in the cooperative group systems last year which was a very similar study using three gemcitabine nab paclitaxel backbone regimens of locally advanced disease looking at intensifying the radiation versus chemo versus standard but it didn't accrue. <laughs>